Hey everyone, it's Janet with Yoga with Janet, and I'm gonna take you through a 60 minute power flow uh, to work towards Bird of Paradise. So, uh, we're gonna do lots of hips and hamstrings and balancing. Yeah, so hopefully, you find some stability and opening in this. We're gonna start on our backs. Come on down. You'll need a strap or just a tea towel. Uh, I feel like I sound so British or Australian. Been here too long. Losing my American roots. Okay. So you'll just start on your back and you're gonna strap, uh, loop the strap or the tea towel around the sole of your right foot. Left leg long. Relax the head so the whole spine is on the ground. And just start centering. So the few deep breaths here. I'm trying not to force anything. Just starting to find a gentle opening in the hamstring and you might even um, keep the leg a little bent. Take a big breath in and out. Press your left thigh bone down. Imagine you're standing on your left foot. Press the foot into the wall. Anchor your left hip and then we're going to take the foot over towards the right. Just 45 degrees rather than all the way down. Just 45 degrees for that gentle hip opening. Plug the left sit bone down. And trying to be as still and as quiet as possible in these opening moments and acknowledging that you're now in a space of doing yoga. Being a little bit more mindful with everything you do with the idea of that translating off the mat. And slowly come back to center and release. We'll move into the other side and strap the foot around the ball of the foot. Just strap the strap, loop the strap. Anchor your right hip and straighten your right leg. And flex the toes towards the face and press your right foot out like, again, you're standing on the wall. Tailbone heavy, skull is heavy. Take a few deep breaths into the back of the leg. With every inhale, you're sending that breath in to create more space, more length. Deep breath in. And out. I'm gonna take the foot over to the left, 45 degrees. And again, you might take your arm out to a T or you just anchor that hip and thigh bone down so the right hip doesn't lift or roll off. Take one more breath. And then slowly come back to center. Release the strap off to the side. Take the feet wide, as wide as the mat, and then interlace your hands behind your head. We're gonna do a little bit of core work. Inhale, and then exhale, crunch up. Inhale, release. Good, exhale for five. Release. Crunch from the rib cage rather than the skull, four. And three, elbows wide, two, reach, 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 Good. and one, lift up and hold, reach your arms between your legs, give me ten pulses up, ten, from the rib cage, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold, and release. Good. Take a breath in, interlace the hands behind your head. This time we're gonna lift 
your legs towards tabletop, but take the knees wide. Right. Inhale. Let exhale crunch up elbows towards the knees. Squeeze it in. Inhale, release. Good. Exhale, squeeze. And release. We're here for four. Three. Nice and slow. Two. And one. Hold. Reach your hands between your thighs. Ten pulses up. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And then release. Oh, and just relax. Bring your arms down by your side. We'll take a bridge just to release the front of the body, the hip flexors, all that work. And slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Heavy inner feet, heavy inner thighs. And then roll all the way. Down. Hug your knees into your chest. You're going to roll along the spine a couple times. All the way over, downward, facing dog. Anchor the inner palms. Spread the fingers. And then lift up through your tailbone. Heels heavy. You can move around if that feels good. Or you can come to stillness and find... Just as much heat. Slowly rise onto the toes and then tiptoe to the top of the mat. Step between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Sweep the arms up. Press the palms. Good. And exhale, dive forward all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the right foot back. Step the left foot back. Inhale, find length. And then lower all the way to your belly. Cobra, anchor the feet. Lift your chest. And then forehead to the mat. I press up to your knees. Tuck toes downward facing dog. Just one breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, and rise onto the toes, and then tiptoe, top of the mat. Hips high, so you find the length in the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold into yourself. Sweep the arms up, lift and lengthen. Swan dive, working into your shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift, and step your right foot back. Step your left foot back. Good. Find the length. Lower. All the way to your belly. And point the toes. Lift the chest. And forehead to the mat. And press up to your knees. And then downward facing dog. Deep breath in. And, and out. Good. Feet together. Option to step or you can jump between the hands. Inhale, find the length, and exhale, fold. Sweep the arms up, press palms, extend side body, and then dive all the way. Inhale, lengthen. Step the left foot back, step the right foot back. This time you can lower to the belly or chaturanga. Lower halfway. Point the toes upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. And rise on to the toes. Look between hands. Jump. Halfway lift. And release. Sweep the arms up. Last one. Press the palms. Extend. Good. And then swan dive. Inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, step the left foot back, 
step the right foot back. Find the breath, lengthen, lower, halfway, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Deep breath in, and out. Anchor the left foot, lift your right leg to the ceiling, take a breath in, and draw your knee into your chest, step between your hands. Good, lunge onto your fingertips, inhale. Good, and then movements of lunge, straighten your leg into pyramid fold. Inhale, bend, heart forward. Exhale, straighten. Two more, deep breath in, heart forward. And fold, right sit bone back. One more, bend. And straighten, just take a couple breaths here. Firm the right hip in, and then lengthen the heart towards the big toe, little tuck of the chin. Bend into your knee, lower the left knee, hook your thumb, sweep up, low lunge. Feel that opening in the left hip flexor. And then sweep the hands down, bring both hands inside of your right foot. Angle the left toes in. The right hand down, left arm to the ceiling, modified side angle. I like to call this Arda side angle, half side angle. Take a big breath in. Good, circle the arm all the way back, down into the top of the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift your knee, frame the foot. Good, and then just step back to plank. Deep breath in, lengthen, lower, halfway. Good, upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Lift your left leg to the ceiling. Draw your knee to your chest. Step through. Fingertip lunge. Drop the left hip. Inhale. Good. And move with the breath. We bend. Breath in. And straighten. Good. Two more. Inhale. Good, anchor the left big toe as you fold. Good. One more. Deep lunge into the right hip flexor. And then straighten, straighten, straighten. You'll just take a couple breaths here, giving your hamstring a little bit more love because we're going to use them. Lengthen the heart forward, and then bend your knee. Lower your right knee down to the mat. Hook your thumb, sweep the arms up. Feel that opening in the right hip flexor. Extend the chest, and then release your hands all the way down. I like that nice wide circle. Both hands inside. Turn the right shin in parallel to the back of the mat, and then reach your right arm to the ceiling. Good, press your arm into your leg. And we're getting that deep external rotation in the left hip. Squeeze the left hip in, look up, Good. and then release the hand all the way down. And frame the foot, inhale, and then step to plank. Take a breath in, chaturanga, upward facing dog. You can linger in the hip. And downward facing dog, hips high. Let's start to walk your hands back towards your feet. Turn your toes out. Take your bum low, malasana yogi squat. Okay, we're gonna do some jumps, which you probably didn't see that coming. Reach your arms forward. And you can always just come up and down if you have any knee stuff. Yeah, or if you're not feeling the cardio, good. But otherwise, we're going to do 10, 9, 8. You can reach with your arms. 7, 6, 
losing my mic. Five, four, three, two, one more. And release. Good. Come into your squat. One more breath. And then lift your hips. Turn your feet in. Take, take your peace fingers to your big toes. Good. Deep breath in. And then exhale. Fold. Belly to thighs. Good. Pull up on your big toes and use that leverage to lengthen the chest down and you're working to find that connection thigh to ribs. Deep breath in. Find the length. Good. And release your hands. Good. Walk your hands out. Downward facing dog. A little inter, a little squat interlude for you. Lift your right leg to the ceiling. Take a breath in. Good. Draw your knee into your chest. Step between your hands. Find the lunge. Fingertips. Inhale. And, and then exhale. Pyramid. Right. Bend into the right knee. Plant the left heel 45 degrees. Reach the arms up. Warrior one. Good. Deepen into the right thigh. Good. Lengthen the sides of the waist. Look up and press the back foot into the mat. Circle the arms down and around. Interlace the hands. Press the fist back. Lift the chest. And then fold inside of the leg. Humble warrior. Deepen your right knee. Press the right shoulder inside of your right leg and firm your right hip in. And slowly release your hands. Lower the back knee and just straighten your right leg. A little bit of a split, half split, just to release that bent leg. And then re-bend both hands inside of your right foot for lizard. You can tuck the back toes and option to come back and forth and just find a bit of movement where you need it. And then you can lower the knee down or keep it lifting and stretch the heart. You just find a variation that works for you. You can even come to the forearms a little bit deeper. Notice if the head is really dropping. See if you can just keep the chest open. And tuck the back toes, lift the knee. Come onto your hands. Frame your right foot. Okay, option to straighten your right leg. And we lift the right leg up and back. Three Legged dog. Lift the leg, bend the knee, open your hip, and make a few circles. And reverse. And then draw your knee to your chest. Step all the way through. Good, look forward. Have a strap handy and step forward. Good. Strap or tea towel around the right foot. Left hand to left hip. And then just stand up. The arm is inside of the leg. So you press your left thigh back so that your standing leg is strong. So in every posture, we're looking for steadiness and stability first. Okay? And then we're able to grow from that place of being stable and grounded. So you can stay here by just hugging the knee, or you can begin to extend your right leg forward. But just like we did when we started, we were on our back, and now we're changing the orientation and adding a balance. Press the left thigh back and pull your right shoulder back. 
Take the leg over to the right, 45 degrees. Let it expand the chest and draw the left hip in and under, right hip under. And slowly come back to center. Release the strap. Keep the leg lifted. Reach your arms forward. So you're not leaning back. Lean forward into the leg for three, for two, and one. Release the leg past the left. Good. Bring the toes down. Plant into your hands. Step to plank. Breathe in. Lower, chaturanga, wash it away, upward facing, and downward facing, Adho Mukha Svanasana, and deep inhale, full exhale, and lift your left leg to the ceiling, breath in, but draw your knee into your chest, step between the hands. Find the fingertips, inhale, good, and then exhale, straighten, good, re-bend, heart forward, place the back heel 45 degrees, sweep the arms up, warrior one, good, and then feel the outer or the hip flexor opening in your right hip, good, but really work the left thigh down. Reach up, lift the back of the heart, and then interlace the hands behind your back. Fist down, open the chest. Humble warrior, fold inside of your left leg. You might need to make space with the feet. Squeeze the left hip towards the midline. Release the head like a piece of fruit on a branch. It's heavy. Maintain the deep bend. Then you should start to feel that fiery sensation. Release the hands. Lower the right knee. And then just take a little half split to straighten. Rebend. Both hands inside of your left foot. Find your lizard. Heart forward. And then option to lift the knee. And take the pulses back and forth. Back and forth. Or option to lower the knee and come down to your forearms. Squeeze the left knee in towards the tricep. Extend the chest forward. Good. Lift the back knee. Your hands and frame the front foot. Option to straighten the left leg like we did before. And you lift the thigh bone up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip, take a couple hip circles. And then the other direction. And draw your knee into your chest and step between the hands. Look forward, step forward. Right hand to right hip. You can take the strap around your left foot. Good, and then stand up. Good. Arm is inside the leg. And just be here for a moment and find steadiness. Firm the right hip in. Drop the left hip down. And then option to extend the leg. Good. And then we'll take it over towards the left. And on the 45 degree angle, so not all the way open, otherwise we start to twist through the torso and the pelvis. Squeeze the right hip in. My plant's getting some attention. My plant knee actually needs more attention, it needs water. Don't we all? Okay, deep breath in and come back to center and then release the strap. Reach your arms forward and lean into your leg for three, two, and one. Slide the left leg all the way back. 
And then you'll step to plank, chaturanga, an upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. So I'm going to give you another little interlude where you can play with your tuck jumps. You can do knees together or you can take your knees wider like the little leprechaun hops that I love to teach. You click the heels above your head. Okay? So you'll shorten the stance and rise onto the toes, shoulders over the wrist so you feel that proprioception. And then bend the knees and kick heels above the head. Making each one better than the last. If you hold it, you can hold it three good. for two and then step or jump top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen and exhale, fold. Good. I'm just going to bring your hands in front of you. We're going to do crow pose. Rise onto the toes, separate the knees into a diamond, lift your hips can lean forward and then knees onto the backs of the arms and, and squeeze. Heels towards your bum, heels towards your bum. One more breath and, and then come into a squat. Good. Grab your strap or your towel and slowly come all the way up. Okay, so we're going to do Gomukhasana arms. This is kind of like a little rest, so enjoy it. Working into internal rotation and external rotation one. So take your top arm above you, right hand above you. Squeeze the elbow in. The strap will come behind you. Good. And then take your opposite arm, spin the palm back, and then slide the hand up the back. You can grab onto the strap or your fingers. And squeeze the elbows towards the midline. Draw your left shoulder back. And from the side, pull the ribs in and press the bum forward. Tailbone down, ribs in, like they're sandwiching towards each other. And then You'll slowly release. Take your arms to a T and just feel any blood rush back in. At other side, take your left arm above your head. Bend the elbow. Notice how the chin comes forward. Press the skull into your forearm. And then take your right arm out to the right. Spin the palm down, palm back. So now you're internally rotating. And slide the palm up your spine. And find the strap. Squeeze the elbows towards the midline. This is my tighter side. So you might just give your tighter side a little extra love. Squeeze the elbows in. Again, sandwich the ribs into the back body and press the tailbone into the pelvis. Thighs back. Skull presses into the forearm. And then slowly release your arms, extend, and drop the strap, top of the mat. But inhale, arms up, press your palms, and then exhale, dive forward all the way. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, step, or you can jump to chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale, and lift your right leg to the ceiling. Option to come through with the straight leg, curl the spine, step through, good, and then lunge. Inhale, and exhale. Bend into your knee, plant the back heel down. Warrior one, reach up. 
Good, and then warrior two, open to the side. Work towards a 90 degree bend. Front heel in line with the back heel or the arch, and then the knee traction's in line with the second and third toe rather than collapsing in. You're getting your right glutes to work. And to reach forward, forearm to the thigh. Option to grab the strap and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Good, we're gonna go into a bind. Spin the top palm back, good, and then release the hand to your right hip. And this may be plenty for you. You can work to spin the chest. Notice the gap between the thigh and the rib cage. You wanna work to maintain that as much as possible, which means that the spine is nice and long and the thigh is at that 90 degree bend. Good, the right hand can come underneath the right thigh and then spin the chest open rather than a wedgie. <laughs> A little thong action. Take the strap to the outer hip. You can always find the fingers as well. And then work to straighten your arms. And take the gaze down. And right hand down, left arm to the ceiling. And then release the strap. Good. Frame the foot. Lower the back knee. Straighten your right leg, half split, goodness. And then re-bend into your right knee. And so we're gonna do another little bind here, a little bit different though. Take the right hand inside of your right foot. And then you're going to drop yourself down to your forearms if that's available. Okay, we're working the torso past the thigh. The right hand is going to work counterclockwise behind the foot and then the hands interlace at the shoelace portion of the foot. And you can stay stable with the back knee down or you can lift the knee and option to press the back heel down. That will give you a little bit more stability. Squeeze the right hip in, heart forward and relax your head down. Your head might start to come behind the calf. And then release the bind. Unravel. Good. Spin all 10 toes towards the right and that'll start to release into your hip. Reach your right arm back. Reverse Skandasana. And then come all the way up down again to the top of the mat. Option to straighten the leg just because it feels good. Sometimes you do things simply because they feel good. And then you'll step to the top of the mat. And so I'm going to face you so you can have a better idea of how this looks. And you can use a strap with this as well. It's going to come into your left hand. Take your right hand between your feet, good, and gen generously bend your right leg. Straighten your left leg back. Left arm to the ceiling. You can always come onto the fingertips or a block as well. And then take your top arm behind your back. Grab the right hip crease. Good, half spine. Stay, or the right hand comes underneath the right thigh to grab the hip, or to grab the strap. And parallel the feet, stretch the heart forward, and then spin the chest. I like to call this bound uttanasana or bound forward fold. Great place to sit. You can gaze down, lift your right heel, and then start to stabilize your left leg as you come up. So working the left thigh back, expand the chest. And then you can stay here or work to straighten your right leg for your bird of paradise. The priority is the standing leg stability and long spine. Bend the knee as slowly as you came in, you come out. So you learn to reverse it just as gracefully. Big breath in. And then release your right hand down, left arm to the ceiling. 
Should be at the top of the mat. Release the arm, halfway lift, lengthen. But you can plant the hands. You can come do a crow jump back, rising onto the toes, separate the knees, or you can just jump back or do any vinyasa that you like. Upward facing and downward facing. Take a deep breath. And then this downward dog is a place where you can mentally gather yourself for what's to come. Lift your left leg. Option to bring it through with a straight leg. <laughs> Fingertips. Heart forward. And exhale. Straighten. Rebend. Inhale, that back heel down, lift the arms, warrior one. Inhale, and then open two, warrior two. Just taking time to set up the legs, align the front heel with the back arch, and then deepen your left knee forward so it's on top of the ankle in line with the second and third toe. And then you're going to reach the left arm forward, forearm to the thigh. You can grab the strap, reach your right arm to the ceiling. Look up, expand the chest, spin the palm back, and then slide the hand behind you. And take a half bind. I'm outside of my left hip. Now option to take the left hand underneath and grab the strap or your fingers and then lift the belly off of your left thigh. Spin the chest towards the ceiling. Steadiness in the intensity. Release left hand down, right arm up. And then release the strap. Lower your right knee. Half split. Bend your left knee. Both hands on the inside. Lower the chest down. Option to come to the forearm. And then you'll take your left hand behind your left calf. And then interlace the hands at the shoelace portion of the foot. Tuck the back toes and then option to lift the knee. I always say option a lot. I love that word because it is. Everything's a choice. That's what makes us different from animals is that we have the ability to direct the course of our own lives. Through conditioning, I think we often feel out of control, but if we work to undo the conditioning, we have more control. Relax the head. And then release your arm. Low, actually, don't lower the knee. Plant the right hand forward and spin all ten toes to the left. Should feel nice in your hip. And then we're going to come all the way back to the top of the mat. This guy has a little mind of his own, a sneaky. But, and then you're going to step forward. Get the strap ready. God knows it makes it a little bit more easeful. Take the left hand between your feet and bend into your left knee. Press the right thigh back. Reach your right arm to the ceiling. Take that strap, whip it behind you. And then the left, well, the left hand can come underneath the left thigh to grab the strap. Parallel the feet. Good. And to begin, just stretch the heart and spin the chest to the ceiling. So the head is in line with the tailbone, not wavering off to either side. And now take the gaze down. Shift the weight into the right foot. Lift your left heel. And slowly 
I'm holding on to the mic as part of the bind. Slowly lift up and be steady. Press the right thigh back. Expand the chest. And then option two, straighten your left leg. Three, two, and one. Bend the knee and slowly release all the way. Inhale, release your left arm down. Reach your right arm to the ceiling. And then release, come to the top of the mat. Then you can come into your crow or you can do um, your jump back and move through your flow. Lower, halfway, upward facing dog. I really like the top of the mat a little bit more. A little bit lopsided, downward facing dog. Big breath in and out. A little shimmy side to side. Okay, we're going to come through onto our butt so you can uh, jump through if you like. We're going to come all the way down onto our backs and counter all of the forward folding with a bit of expanding the front body. Okay, release your hands and I'm going to prepare for a bridge. So align the heels with the sit bones. You should be able to touch your heels. Open the chest and then slowly ripple up one vertebrae at a time. You can take the bind, interlace the hands, press the fist down. You should feel quite open in the chest. And then press into your heels, tailbone up into the pelvis. And as you press into your heels, you find the height and then squeeze the heels back towards your shoulders like you're dragging them towards your hands and you engage the hamstrings. So much lengthening of the hamstrings, we want to strengthen them as well. And then slowly release the hands and roll down one vertebrae at a time. Bring your hands to your belly and take a couple deep breaths. I'm gonna move into that again. Okay, so place the heels in line with the sit bones, open the chest, and then roll all the way up, one vertebrae at a time. Lift the hips. You can press your elbows down, like little karate arms, and then option to bring the hands by the ears, fingers towards the feet, and then come to the crown of the head. Good, elbows squeeze in. Good. So stage two is that we're just going to lift the crown of the head one inch. I always do this to find more strength in the legs and the arms. So just lift one inch away, squeeze the elbows in, and then press into your legs to open the chest. It's fiery, but it's good. And then slowly. Crown of the head, lower, upper back, middle back, lower back, feet wide, knock the knees in. We're going to do one more option to come into the wheel. Place the feet, heels, open the chest, and then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Bring the hands behind you. Let's squeeze the elbows in and then lift to the crown of the head. And you can hover the head and then press up 
Work to straighten the arms. And then inner feet heavy, inner thighs heavy. Press the tailbone up into the pelvis. And the pubic bone is the highest point. And then come all the way down. Upper back, middle back, lower back. Hands onto the belly, feet wide. Knock the knees in just to create more space with the lower back, the sacrum. Take the arms to a T. We are going to chill it out. Take the right thigh on top of your left thigh, like a little lady's cross, and then hug your knees into your chest. You can grab from behind the thighs, but find the whole length of the spine onto the mat. So a little hug here, reclined, Gomukhasana. Three breaths. and then take your arms to a T. So this is really nice. We did so much external rotation and opening of the hips that we're now finding internal rotation where the inner thighs cross over. And take the hips over to the right and then drop your knees over to the left. If this is too much on the lower back, you can always unravel the legs just so they stack. And then I like to bring the knees up higher towards the belly button or the armpit so that I bring the twist up the spine rather than just keeping it or torquing in the low back. Let everything soften and turn this closing part of your practice into a ritual. I love that phrase, ritual. Things are easier to do consistently when they come from a place of ritual and a place of feeling rather than a logical decision. Right. It makes sense that we should get up every morning and do our yoga practice. But unless we connect to the feeling of it, right, it's hard for it to become a ritual, something we do without thinking about. Slowly come back to center. And then we'll do the other side. So hook the left thigh on top of the right. Knees in, and then you can grab behind the thighs. Relax the head down. And just take three deep breaths. And then take your arms to a T and drop your knees over towards the right. And the hips might have to go to the left a little. And again, you can just stack the legs as well. Press the left shoulder down. And then just let yourself be. It's enough to just lay here and experience. 
<sighs> Take two more deep breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. And out. And you're going to come back to center. Hug your knees into your chest. And just a little rock side to side. And we're going to prepare for Shavasana. You'll spread yourself out, your legs long, arms 45 degrees or so away from the body. And I like to lift my shoulders, draw them down the back, and same with the butt. Lift the butt, draw the tailbone towards the knees. And we'll start to give yourself permission to rest. No, nothing left to do. This is enough for today. You are entitled to find rest and a deep sense of peace in this moment and every moment, but this is where we practice it. Continue to linger for as long as you possibly can. You can just start to naturally deepen the breath. Noticing the expansion and the contraction. And then reach your arms above your head. Take a big stretch. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug to a little ball. And then roll to your right side. Just take a moment to notice how you feel. Any differences from when you first stepped onto the mat. And keep your eyes closed. Press yourself up to seated. Comfortable seat. And grow tall through your spine. Little tuck of the chin. Notice the effects of your practice. The idea of our practice is to not add new skills and new information and over stuff ourselves but to strip away and to eliminate old thought patterns habits reactions and so we can you know move into this place of choosing how we want to move forward rather than it just happening to us. Bring your hands into your heart. Deep breath in. And out. 
Option to take an OM. Inhale. bow of gratitude for everything that allowed you to practice today. Namaste. Have an amazing day and see you soon.